Hello everyone. In this video, I have discussed the introduction of organometallic chemistry. I started with a basic introduction and then proceed with the classification of organometallic compound. Important topic like haptistry, 18 electron rule and effective atomic number are also discussed in detail. I will share all the remaining topic of organometallic chemistry in my upcoming videos. Let's get started. So, organometallic compound as the name implies those organic compound which contain metal but essentially in organometallic compound the central metal atom is bonded directly to a carbon atom of the organic moiety. That is the carbon atoms must be a part of hydrocarbon like an alkane, alkene, alkyne and aromatic. Whereas the central metal may belong to any block of the periodic table, but it must be more electropositive than carbon atom. The bonding interaction between the central metal atom and the carbon atom may be ionic, covalent, delocalized or localized in nature. Here is a periodic table with the electronegativity of each element. As you can see, the electronegativity of carbon is 2.55 and almost all the elements, whether they may belong to S block, D block or maybe from the F block, all have lesser electronegativity than carbon. Thus, they all can form an organometallic compound with carbon. Moreover, there are some elements in the P block like boron, aluminium, silicon, arsenic, etc which also have lesser electronegativity than carbon, they also form an organometallic compound. In my opinion, we can also define organometallic compound as those compounds where the metal or metalloid are directly bonded with the carbon atom of an organic moiety. Although there are some exceptions just like in some of the theories of chemistry. The first exception is a series of metal carbonyl complexes such as nickel tetracarbonyl, iron pentacarbonyl, etc. In these complexes, the ligand is carbon monoxide, which is an inorganic molecule. However, they are considered as organometallic compound as their property, both physical and chemical, are similar to those of other organometallic compounds. The second exception is a series of inorganic chemical like sodium cyanide, potassium cyanide. They are not considered as organometallic compound because their physical as well as chemical property are similar to those of inorganic salt. The third exception is a series of those complexes in which the carbon atom is not directly bonded with the central metal atom. For example, alkoxide, pyridine, triphenyl phosphine, dialkyl ether, dialkyl sulfide, carbonate, organic amine, metallic salt of organic acid like sodium acetate. In these examples, the carbon atom is a part of an organic moiety and the property of these carbon compound are also similar to those of organometallic compound. However, the carbon atom is not directly bonded with the central metal atom. The fourth exception is a series of those compounds in which the carbon atom is not a part of organic moiety, such as metal carbide, intercalated compound of graphite and fullerene. Even though they contain the direct metal carbon bond, however, they are excluded from the family of organometallic compound. I hope now you all understood and can classify whether the following 20 compounds are organometallic or not. The next topic is a classification of our organometallic compound. Well, based on the nature of metal carbon bond, we can classify the organometallic compound into five categories. The first one is ionic organometallic compound. As the name implies, the nature of metal carbon bond is purely ionic. Most of the organometallic compound of alkali metal except lithium fall in this category. Sodium butyl, sodium methyl, etc. These ionic organometallic compounds just like 
ordinary ionic compound or salt are soluble in polar solvent that's why they are quite reactive and kinetically unstable according to fazan rule a covalent character is directly proportional to the size of an anion and inversely proportional to the size of a cation this is why lithium is excluded from the family of ionic compound ionic organometallic compound as its small cationic size induce some covalent character among their complexes also compound with larger cation and a smaller carbonion are mostly ionic thus based on the fazan rule the most ionic compound is cesium methyl okay the next one is sigma covalent organometallic compound the metallic element of group 2 13 14 and 15 as well as the transition element with fully d orbital such as zinc cadmium and mercury form organometallic compound in which the metal atom are bonded to carbon atom through a sigma covalent bond for example grignard reagent diethyl zinc tetra alkyl lead this sigma covalent bond is typical to electron to center just like an ordinary sigma bond this bond may have some ionic character depending upon the electronegativity difference between the central metal and the carbon atom the third one is pi covalent organometallic compound this category includes organometallic compounds of unsaturated carbon like alkene alkyne and some other carbon containing compound having electron in their pi molecular orbital they are also known as non classical bonded organometallic compound as they do not involve typical two electron two center bonding in this case the pi molecular orbital of the organic moiety overlaps with the vacant orbital of the metal atom in such a way that the metal atom gets bound to all carbon atom over the which the pi molecular orbital of the organic ligand is delocalized they are further classified into three the first one is pi metal alkenyl complexes in this complexes the central metal atom overlaps with the pi bonding molecular orbital of an alkene for example z salt as you can see the platinum atom gets bound to both of the carbon atom of ethene over which the pi molecular orbital of the ethene is delocalized next is pi metal alkenyl complexes in this complexes the central metal atoms overlap with the pi mol bonding molecular orbital of alkyne group here the platinum atom gets bound to both of the carbon atom of ethene over which the pi molecular orbital of the ethene is delocalized third pi covalent organometallic compound is metallocene in this complex the central metal atom overlaps with the delocalized molecular orbital of the cyclic ring for example ferrocene in this complex the iron atom gets bound to all five carbon atom of the cyclopentadienyl ring over which the pi molecular orbital of the cyclopentadienyl ring is delocalized well the fourth type of organometallic compound is yellide the organometallic compound in which the central metal atom is bonded doubly with the carbon atom of the ligand are called yellide for example vitreous reagent in vitreous reagent the phosphorus atom is doubly bonded to the carbon atom of methylene okay the last one is multi center organometallic compound the organometallic compound of high polarizing power base metal like lithium beryllium magnesium and aluminum form electron deficient structure due to their high polarizing power these metal do not provide sufficient electron density to car per carbon atom of the organic moiety in traditional two electron two center bonds such polar nature of the bonding will tend to associate strongly with other molecule which led to an overall polymeric structure for example 
एल्यूमिनियम अल्काइल फॉर्म डायमर बेरिलियम एंड मैग्नीशियम अल्काइल फॉर्म लीनियर चेन लिथियम अल्काइल फॉर्म थ्री डायमेंशनल पॉलीमर I hope now you all understood and can classify the following organometallic compound based on the bonding. The next topic is the haptic hapticity in the organometallic compound. In coordination compound, we have classified ligand as monodentate, bidentate, etc. Depending upon the number of donor site through which a ligand binds to a central metal atom. In a similar way, in organometallic compound, the ligand are classified based on their hapticity. Hapticity is defined as the number of carbon atom through which an organic ligand is attached to metal atom. It is represented by eta raised to power n, where n is the number of carbon atom of the ligand attached with the metal. Thus, in organometallic chemistry, ligand may thus classified as follows: mono hapto ligand. For example, metal carbonyl, carbon monoxide ligand or carbonyl ligand has two donor site and can form a bond with a metal through the carbon atom only. Similarly, alkyl group that also form a bond with metal through carbon atom only. Although alkenyl and alkaline groups have sigma and pi electron, they form a bond with metal through sigma electron of one of the carbon. similar behavior is also seen in aryl sigma cyclopentadienyl and sigma allyl ligand wherein they also form a bond with metal through the sigma electron of one of the carbons we consider ethene as a dihapto ligand as it forms a bond through the pi bond pi electron of the pi bond formed in between its two carbon pi allyl ligand is a trihapto ligand here in the pi electrons delocalizing over the three carbon atoms form a bond with metal the allyl that is c3h5 can be monohapto ligand or trihapto ligand depending upon the number of carbon atoms involved in bond formation with metal both linear butadiene and cyclobutadiene are tetrahapto ligand pi cyclopentadienyl and pi arene are the pentahepto and hexahepto ligand as they form a bond with metal using the pi electron delocalizing over the entire cyclic ring likewise allyl ligand they also show dual hapticity as discussed earlier they are considered as monohapto ligand when they form a bond with metal through the sigma electron of one of the carbon The example of heptahepto and octahepto ligand are cyclohepta trienyl and cycloocta tetraenyl respectively. They form a bond with the metal using the pi electron delocalizing over the entire cyclic ring. I hope now you all understood and can classify the following based on their hapticity. The next topic is the 18 electron rule for organometallic compound. Before moving to the 18 electron rule, let us go back to the octet rule. The stability of S and P block compound is determined using the octet rule, which refers to the tendency of atoms to prefer 8 electron in the valence shell. That is, the sum of its ns electron and np electron must be equal to 8. This is how they will achieve the same electronic configuration as the noble gas in the period. For example, sodium chloride. The electronic configuration of sodium ion is 1s2, 2s2, 2p6, whereas the electronic configuration of chloride ion is 1s2, 2s2, 2p6, 3s2, and 3p6. Both of the ion in sodium chloride contain eight electrons in their valence shell and hence acquire a stable noble gas configuration. In a similar way the stability of organometallic compound can be determined using the 18 electron rule it involves ns2 n-1 d10 np6 electronic configuration which helps in 
determining the stability of transition metal base organometallic compound. It is stated that the stable complex is obtained when the sum of the metal D electron, the electron donated by the ligand and the overall charge of the complex is 18. This is how the metal will achieve the same electronic configuration as the noble gas in the period. In 3D transitions metal, the number of electron in 4p is 0. So the valence electron would depend on 4s and 3d electron. However, before complex formation, all the 4s electron are transferred to the 3d orbital in its excited state and then only the metal undergoes hybridization. So we can say the valence electron depend only on the d electron. Consider the example of hexamine cobaltate ion. The atomic number of cobalt is 27, so the electronic configuration of its valence shell is 3D7 4S2. The oxidation state of cobalt in this complex is plus 3, thus there are 6 valence electron. Also, each ammonia ligand will donate 2 electrons, so overall 12 electron from the 6 ligand. Consequently, the total valence electron count in this complex are 18. That means the complex follows the 18 electron rule and is stable. Okay, one can easily calculate the valence electron count of the metal ion, but the problem arises in the finding the electron count of the ligand. There are so many ligands, some are neutrals while some are negative in charge. They also differ in the type of electrons used in the bond formation with metal. Here I have tabulated the electron count of various ligands. The nitrogen and phosphorus atom in amine and phosphine ligand use their lone pair of electron in the bond formation with the metal, so they donate two electrons. The electron counts in hydrogen and nitrogen diatomic molecule is also two, as both the atom of their molecule are involved in the bond formation with the metal. Carbonyl, cyanide, and alkene use their pi electron in the bond formation with the metal. So they donate two electrons. Alkyne is a flexible ligand which can donate either four or two electrons depending on the complex requirement to show stability. Nitrosyl can donate either one or three electrons depending on the nature of the, of the metal. The bent structured nitrosyl which carry a negative charge is one electron donor while the linear structure nitrosyl which carry a positive charge is a 3 electron donor. It is experimentally observed that the transition metal from the 3D series form a complex with linear structure nitrosyl. On the other hand, the transition metal from 5D series form a complex with band structure nitrosyl. So based on the nature of transition metal, we can predict the electron count of nitrosyl ligand. Ligands such as halogen, hydrogen, alkyl, acyl and amide used is sigma electrons only during bond formation with metal thus they are one electron donor. Allyl, cyclopentadienyl and benzene can be single electron donor or multi electron donor depending upon whether they delocalize whether delocalized electron of the cyclic ring are involved in bond formation with metal or not. Now let me illustrate some more example. Hexacyanoferrate ion. The atomic number of iron is 26. So the electronic configuration of its valence shell is 3D6 4S2. The oxidation state of iron in this complex is plus 2. Thus there are 6 valence electron. Also, each cyanide ligand will donate two electrons. So overall 12 electrons from six ligand. Consequently, the total valence electron count in this complex are 18. That means the complex follow the 18 electron rule and is stable. Nickel tetrakis phosphorus fluoride. The atomic number of nickel is 28. So the electronic configuration of its valence shell is 3D8 4S2. The oxidation state of nickel in this complex is 0, thus there are 10 valence electrons. Also, 
ईच ट्राई फ्लोरोफॉसफिन लीगन विल डोनेट टू इलेक्ट्रॉन सो ओवरऑल एट इलेक्ट्रॉन फॉर्म फोर लीगन्स कॉन्सिक्वेंटली द टोटल वैलेंस इलेक्ट्रॉन इन दिस कॉम्प्लेक्स आर एटीन डेट मीन्स द कॉम्प्लेक्स फॉलो द एटीन इलेक्ट्रॉन रूल एंड इज स्टेबल हेक्सा कार्बोनिल मैगनीज आयन द अटामिक नंबर ऑफ मैगनीज इज ट्वेंटी फाइव सो द इलेक्ट्रॉनिक कॉन्फिग्रेशन ऑफ इस वैलेंस शेल इज थ्री डी फाइव फोर एस टू द ऑक्सीडेशन स्टेट ऑफ मैगनीज इन दिस कॉम्प्लेक्स इज प्लस वन सो सिक्स इलेक्ट्रॉन फ्रॉम मैगनीज ट्वेल्व इलेक्ट्रॉन फ्रॉम सिक्स कार्बोनिल ओवरऑल सिक्स एटीन इलेक्ट्रॉन सो दिस इज अ स्टेबल कॉम्प्लेक्स In this complex, the oxidation state of manganese is minus one. So, eight electron from manganese, ten electron from five carbonyl. Overall, eighteen electron. So, this complex is also stable. Triphenyl phosphine iron tetracarbonyl. The oxidation state of iron in this complex is zero, and both triphenyl phosphine and carbonyl are two electrons donor. So eight electron from iron, two from triphenyl phosphine, and eight from four carbonyls. Thus, overall eighteen electron. This complex follow the eighteen electron rule and is stable. In this complex, the oxidation state of manganese is zero. Methyl ligand is a one electron donor. So seven electron from manganese, one from methyl. And ten from five carbonyls. Thus, overall eighteen electron, which make this complex stable. In this complex, we have three different ligand, and all of them are neutral. Thus, the oxidation state of chromium is zero. Ethyl ligand is a one electron donor. So, six electron from chromium, one from ethyl, five from cyclopentadienyl, and six from three carbonyl. Thus, overall eighteen electron. Which make this complex stable. The oxidation state of manganese in this complex is plus one. So six electron from manganese, two from ethene, and ten from five carbonyl. Overall eighteen electron, and it is a stable complex. The oxidation state of cobalt in this complex is zero. So seven electron from cobalt, four from cyclo beta diene. And five from cyclopentadienyl. Thus, this complex is stable. In this complex, we have both one and five electrons donor cyclopentadienyl. Also, the oxidation state of iron is zero. So, six electron from iron, four from two carbonyl, one from sigma, and five from pi cyclopentadienyl. Thus, overall eighteen electron. and it is also a stable complex the oxidation state of vanadium in this complex is zero so five electron from vanadium six from three carbonyl and five from cyclopentadienyl the sum of this electron is 16 as we know alkyne is a flexible ligand that can donate either four or two electron depending on the complex requirement to show stability therefore in Here in this complex, alkyne will act as two electron donors to make this complex stable. In this complex, nitrosyl is bonded with the transition metal from the 3D series. Here it is; it must be linear structure nitrosyl, which is a three electrons donor. Thus, ten electron from nickel, three from linear nitrosyl, and five. from pi cyclopentadienyl thus overall 18 electron and it is also a stable complex i hope now you all understood and can predict whether the following complexes follow 18 electron rule or not the next topic is the effective atomic number rule for organometallic compound it is similar to the 18 electron rule which we have discussed earlier and it is also used to evaluate the stability of organometallic compound the effective atomic number is defined as the total number of electrons possessed by a transition metal or ion and the electron 
gain by it from the ligand the effective atomic rule number rule state that for stable complex formation the effective atomic number in an organometallic compound should be equal to either 36 54 or 86 electrons for example transitions metal from 3d series will try to achieve an effective atomic number of 36 as the krypton gas in the period similarly 4d and 5d transitions metal will try to achieve an effective atomic number of xenon and radon respectively after acquiring the electronic configuration of noble gas their complexes become stable there are two methods for evaluating the effective atomic number of organometallic compound a covalent method that consider both metal and ligand as neutral atoms while evaluating their electron count an ionic method that consider the oxidation state of metal and charge on the ligand while evaluating their electron count electron count the covalent method and ionic method are also known as the neutral method and oxidation method respectively here i have tabulated the electron count of various ligand a covalent method is quite convenient and easy to use and i always recommend it to my student the reasoning for their electron count using the electron uh, covalent method is the same as we have discussed in the 18 electron rule in some cases the electron count of the ligand remain the same as considered by the covalent method now let me illustrate the covalent method and neutral method or ionic method using the example of pentacarbonyl hydrohydro complex first using covalent method the atomic number of manganese is 25 so it will contribute 25 electron also each carbonyl ligand will donate 2 electron so 10 electron from 5 carbonyl ligands hydrogen is a 1 electron donor consequently the effective atomic number is 36 okay using ionic method the oxidation state of manganese is plus 1 so 24 electron from manganese ion 10 electrons from 5 carbonyl ligands and 2 electrons from the hydrohydro ion consequently the effective atomic number is 36 both of the methods gave the same result but the covalent method is more convenient now let me illustrate some more example pentacarbonyl methyl manganese the atomic number of manganese is 25 and there is no charge on the complex so the oxidation state of manganese is zero that means the manganese will contribute 25 electrons also each carbonyl ligand will donate two electrons so overall 10 electrons from five carbonyl ligand methyl ligand is a one electron donor consequently the effective atomic number of pentacarbonyl methyl manganese is 36 that means the complex follows the effective atomic number rule and is stable hexaamine cobaltate ion complex the ammonia is a neutral ligand so the charge on the complex indicate that the oxidation state of cobalt is plus 3 so the atomic number of cobalt is 27 and uh, therefore the cobalt plus 3 ion will contribute 24 electron also each ammonia ligand will donate 2 electrons so 12 electrons from 6 ligand thus effective atomic number of hexamine cobaltate ion complex is 36 that means the complex follow the effective atomic number rule and is stable hexacyanoferrate ion complex the atomic number of iron is 26 and therefore iron plus 2 will contribute 24 electrons also each cyanide ligand will donate 2 electron so 12 electron from 6 ligand 
consequently the effective atomic number of this complex is also 36 which make it stable in this complex the atomic number of chromium is 24 and there is no charge on the complex so the oxidation state of chromium is zero that means the chromium will contribute 24 electron also each carbonyl ligand will donate two electrons so overall six electrons form three carbonyl ligand ethyl ligand and pi cyclopentadienyl will donate one and five electron respectively thus the effective atomic number of this complex is 36 that means the complex follow effective atomic number rule and is stable in this complex we have both one and five electron donor cyclopentadienyl also the oxidation state of iron is zero so 26 electron from iron four from two carbonyls and one from sigma and five from pi cyclopentadienyl thus overall 36 electron which make this complex stable in this complex the atomic number of cobalt is 27 and there is no charge on the complex so the oxidation state of cobalt is zero that means the cobalt will contribute 27 electron thus 27 electrons from cobalt 4 electron from cyclo beta dienyl 5 from cyclo penta dienyl therefore this complex is also following 36 effective atomic number rule and is stable the charge on the complex is zero so 23 electron from vanadium 6 from 3 carbonyls and 5 from cyclo penta dienyl the sum of these electron is 34 as we know an alkyne is a flexible ligand that can donate either four or two electron depending on the complex requirement to show stability therefore here in this complex the alkyne will act as two electron donor to make this complex stable the charge on the complex is plus one so 24 electron from manganese ion and 10 from five carbonyls the sum of this electron is 34 likewise previous example alkyne will have two electron donors to make this complex stable in this complex nitrosyl is bonded with the transition metal from the 3d series hence it must be linear structure nitrosyl which is a three electrons donor thus 28 electrons from nickel three from linear nitrosyl and five from cyclo pentadienyl consequently the effective atomic number of this complex is 36 and it is a stable complex in this complex the atomic number of molybdenum is 42 and there is no charge on the complex so the oxidation state of molybdenum is zero that means the molybdenum will contribute 42 electrons thus four electron from two carbonyl and three from pi allyl and five from pi cyclo pentadienyl ligand Consequently, the effective atomic number of this complex is 54. That means the complex follow the effective atomic number rule and is stable. Similarly, in this complex, a contribution of 42 electron from molybdenum, 6 electron from 3 carbonyl, 1 from sigma allyl and 5 from pi cyclopentadienyl ligand. Overall, 54 electrons make this complex stable. In this complex the atomic number of rhodium is 45 and there is no charge on the complex so the oxidation state of rhodium is zero that means the rhodium will contribute 45 electrons both alkyne and tetrafluoroethylene are a flexible ligand that can donate either four or two electrons depending on the complex requirement to store stability therefore here in this complex these two ligands will act as two electron donors to make this complex stable the atomic number of tungsten is 74 and there is no charge on the complex so the oxidation state of tungsten is zero that means the tungsten will contribute 74 electrons trimethyl silyl is a one electron donor thus 74 electrons from tungsten six electron from three carbonyls and one electron from trimethyl silyl and five from pi cyclo penta dienyl ligands consequently the effective atomic number of this complex is 86 that means 
the complex follow the effective atomic number rule and is stable the atomic number of rhenium is 75 thus 75 electron from rhenium and 10 electron from 5 carbonyl one from methyl ligand consequently the effective atomic number of this complex is also 86 that means the complex follow the effective atomic number rule and is stable some organometallic compound do not obey the effective atomic number rule but they are quite stable here i have tabulated well known organometallic compound which are defining the effective atomic number their stability can be explained by valence bond theory crystal field theory etc i hope now you all understood and can predict whether the following complexes follow the 18 electron rule or not now i end this video here thanks for watching see you in the next video of this series